Local legends, old stories, and a city that's gone from ancient to modern, reinventing itself along the way. Tonight, our more local segment, Where You Live, takes us to Pearl City. Both Paula and Mwani grew up there. <laughs> and Mwani, we know this is a unique story for you. Yeah, you know, I thought I knew almost everything about the place <laughs> I grew up, but uh, not even close. Come along for the journey as KITV4 photographer Sunny Ahuna and I take you for a long ride through time. Welcome to Pearl City, a thriving town, home to 47,000 people. Among them, Ruby Kaho'opii, who's lived here for close to 50 years. Oh, it really changed a lot. When we moved here, it was just a small portion. My husband was a veteran, so we got the veteran um, rights to come and pick up lots. Suburban development kick-started here in the 1890s when Oahu Railway and Land Company added a Pearl City station to their bustling train line. This whole area, you know, is just so wonderful. We have a park here. Councilman Breen Harimoto was born here in 1954. He remembers when all of this was sugarcane well, fields yeah. and this road carried the harvest. And every so often they'd come by and oil it down to control the dust. And then you'd see these huge trucks come by with these mounds of sugarcane on it on its way to the factory. And, down the hill, this repair shop was where Pearl City Theater once stood. For nine cents, you could catch a double feature. This is a big, small town. It's easy to find familiar faces, like restaurant owner Harry Balatico. Ask him about Pearl City, and he thinks of just one place. Pearl City Tavern. Now, everybody knows Pearl City Tavern. And they had the monkey bar there, and the bonsai um, uh, showing there. It was one of the place that local people used to go and eat. For others, Pearl City is about winners. Chad Miyake pitching for Pearl City. Here's a drive to right. Look at this catch by Jason Adaros. Especially in baseball. Pearl City has won so many titles, some still think of it as a baseball town. But what about the name? Do you know the traditional name for Pearl City? No, I don't. Do you know the traditional name for Pearl City? Is it Hawaiian? Do you know the traditional Hawaiian name for this area? The traditional name was Manana. This old map shows Manana as one of 12 Ahupua'a within the Eva district. It sits right next to the Ahupua'a of Waiava, Waimano, and Waiau. Through the years, the lines have been mostly forgotten, and now this entire area is known as simply Pearl City. The Manana Ahupua'a runs from the Ko'olau Mountains and into the Pearl Harbor Locks. In ancient times, the floodplains were strictly taro, but not the irrigated type. Instead, a ditch bed form filled with water from the streams and surrounding springs. The watercress farm in Aiea gives us a glimpse of what those floodplains might have looked like. We're standing right across the street from YL Power Plant next to an overgrown, fresh pool of water. In ancient Hawaii, it was called Hono Kawailani, and this is where some believe a mermaid lived. Oh, no, Kawailani. The legend speaks of a worried mother who goes searching for her missing daughter at Hono Kawailani. She starts to move towards the daughter, and the daughter goes like this and tells her no, tells her to stop. And she's not sure why, but as she's asking the daughter to come home with her, then that's when the daughter kind of, um, I guess, kind of comes up through the water and dives down. And she sees that her daughter now has a mermaid tail. And so the mother cries because she knows that her daughter can never come home. Long before the attack on Pearl Harbor, the waters here were known for their beautiful pearls. But by the 1880s, deforestation caused major runoff, suffocating the oysters. By 1901, there were hardly any left. Today, the water is still here, but so much has changed. Big box retailers like Walmart and Home Depot started moving in in the early 2000s, but not without a fight. The community was clear that they didn't want the big boxes to come in. They wanted to keep it kind of local style. Um, but as it turns out, we've got the big boxes and we've got all the traffic. And soon, a train will change this town again. These empty homes sit on an area known as Banana Patch, 
eventually it'll be transformed into a rail station and parking garage. But despite the ever-changing surroundings, people who live here still embody that old-school aloha. It's just a wonderful community. Even though we've grown into a big city, I think we still cherish that in our hearts, you know, the local style. Uh, I live up the street now, and I, th I still feel that. And, you know, given the size of Pearl City, there's so much more history out there. I didn't even have time to get to the old Pearl City bowling alley, the peninsula in the 20s and 30s that was sort of Hawaii's version of the Hamptons. And coming up tomorrow, <laughs> guys, we're going to dig a little deeper into that legend of the mermaid of Honokawailani. I feel like I look at Pearl City in a whole new light oh, yeah, now. Definitely. When you drive Same through here. it, it's so different to see all that history. And I love that legend. Fascinating stuff. Miss the monkey bar. Oh, Miss, yeah. Miss Pearl City Tavern. Mm -hmm. We were there all the time. My mom and dad to eat dinner and me so I could look at the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a post on our Facebook page right now where you can share your memories of Pearl City. Remember to like us so stories like that will come right to your newsfeed.